Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is Miranda at the Zach Girls blog, and today we're gonna to be making DIY beeswax dipped taper candles. I'm gonna start off with just two pounds of pure beeswax. I purchased yellow blocks online, but you can also find beeswax in other variations in store or online. And then I'm also using hemp wick. And this I also purchased online. You want a thicker wick that can accommodate a larger flame since beeswax takes a higher temperature to burn. Other than that, I'm not using any other specific um, products. The galvanized steel heat proof container I already owned and the vase is from the Dollar Tree that I've used for decorating. The saucepan is the same one I used for the DIY botanical body oil and I'm just preheating some water on there since I'll be using the galvanized steel container for a double boiler method. Okay, so for the first step in this process, it's going to be to take the beeswax blocks and grate it so it's in almost like a flake or curl consistency so that it can melt evenly. When you purchase your beeswax, you may wanna think about this part of the process. So I purchased it in blocks that has to be grated, but you can also purchase it in pellets or already grated. Um, you may wanna go that route if you wanna make this a much simpler project with less work. But I'm just going to take out a normal box grater and use um, the setting that you'd use for like shredded cheese and use that to grate the beeswax. When I'm done grating it, I'll fill it into the galvanized steel heat resistant, it's like a vase. Um, I'll fill that full of all the beeswax curls and this is what it's going to look like. Now obviously because they're curls, it's going to melt way down, so just because you filled it with curls doesn't mean that that's how much beeswax you're going to need. You're going to actually need to keep continually adding the beeswax to the heated mixture to get enough to actually dip candles. So I'm gonna put that into the preheated water in a double boiler kind of method to gently melt the beeswax. Now there's a lot of ways you can do this when you're dipping your wick. I went for the simplest form. Honestly, if you've been watching my other videos or you read my blog content, you'll see that I usually go for more of a rustic look. I go for present over perfect. So I want to accomplish the project. I don't really care if it looks like it was hanging in a boutique or at Target on a shelf. Um, so I'm going to knot both ends of my wick. And this wick has a bit of a waxy coating, so it is. I can pull on it and make it a little bit straighter but I'm gonna double it and then when I hold it, I want both sides to be about an inch and a half apart so they aren't touching when I dip. So I'm just gonna dip the wicks into the hot wax and then I'm gonna bring it over and dip it into cool water. And why I'm doing that is because I want the wax to set up before I re-dip it so it's not just continually running down, um, having hot wax hit hot wax. And you'll see here that I'm getting a slight coating of the beeswax on the wick and the wicks are rather wavy. So I'm just gonna manipulate that by gently moving the wick with my index finger and my thumb and just kind of gently straightening it out. Since it's such a thin coating of wax, it'll take the direction a little better and you can do that a few times. As long as it's slightly warm and you're not being aggressive about it, you can keep kind of manipulating the wick to be a little more straight. You could also take a bolt or something heavy and tie that to the bottom of your candle and then just cut that off when you're done getting the shape that you want. But for me, I go for just whatever's easiest and honestly, this is the easiest process. So because I have about a pound and a half of beeswax in there, it doesn't go super high in the galvanized container, so that's why I'm tilting the container so I can get more coverage and a longer taper candle. If you're enjoying this content, be sure to like my video down below, but also subscribe to my channel and you'll find more content like this, such as a DIY botanical body oil, that has a video and a blog post as well. And if you go down into the info box down below, I'll have all the products that I used to create this project, as well as a link to my blog post that will give you a step-by-step -step instructions to print out so you can do this project at home. Also, keep an eye out because I'll be showing soon how to make container candles with beeswax as well.
So from this point on, I'm going to speed up the video so I can show you exactly from start to finish how long it took for me to make this set of taper candles. All in all, this project took me about an hour, hour and a half, and I created 18 taper candles. I had plenty of beeswax left over, which I cooled flat on some wax paper so that I can just break it up into pieces to remelt for when I go to make my container candles. Make sure that whenever you're done with this project to save your beeswax. Um, I also started the taper candles first before I did the container candles because I wanted to use pure beeswax. And for the container candles, I most likely will be adding some additives um, for scent or other aspects of it. So this is a great way to use your pure beeswax and still be able to reuse whatever isn't used for this project. Now, I'm really not going to give you any type of diameter, just keep dipping until you get the diameter that you want for your taper candles. I have a few um, candlesticks that I tend to use, so I know what diameter I'd like my candles to be in order to use my candlesticks, but also if you're using some type of a Waldorf birthday ring or something with a different diameter, just keep an eye on what diameter you need your candles to be. And the taper candles are completely customizable to how fat or thin you'd like them to be or how short or tall as well. Of course, if you'd like a taller candle, you'll need to use more beeswax in a thinner container. So these are my candles. I don't have a special rack to dry them or cool them on, so I use a light fixture that I have in my dining room that's easily accessible for me. And I left them up there to cool. You'll see they all look a little bit different. I left them up there to cool for an afternoon and then they were ready to use. And here's one of them in one of my candlesticks. So I'll use these for the rest of the winter. I'll still do probably a couple more batches, but we burn beeswax candles all the time in our home and we really love them. I hope you enjoy this project and you take the time to do it yourself. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. Have a great day.